Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Snap on Ego. My name is Brad, otherwise known as Brad Sever, and I'm joined by Chris, the boot man, Boote, with all of his non-Marvel memorabilia behind him, which, thankfully, we're not sponsored by Marvel Snap. Otherwise, we'd have to re-record this entire podcast with those taken down. Yeah, yeah, I had to I had to download a little blur uh plug in for OBS <laughs> and re record for the official Marvel Snap channel. So but yeah, now I got my I can I can put my Batmans up, my little Bowser in the corner. Yeah, and you Looks got beautiful. you gotta be able, that that's the thing. Like I understand like the branding aspect of like Marvel and like you can't show Batman, you can't show that, that's the enemy. And I'm like, but come on, you should expect that. We we like random shit. Uh, I, was the Star Wars stuff behind you okay? Because it's Disney? Uh, well, that's what I was wondering. Like, at first, at first, I was like, it's, like I, I was just like, it's just Star Wars stuff. And then I looked behind me, I'm like, oh, okay. But yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe if they ask me to do it again, I'll try it just to experiment. Because <laughs> you, you get assume the it's again. okay, right? It's Disney. Yeah. Until we get the crossover for Marvel Snap with the uh, Star Wars stuff, right? Yep, exactly. It'd be great. But you know what? We got some cool stuff to talk about this uh, wonderful week. Today is a Sunday. It's the day of the Sabbath, even though technically the Sabbath is actually a Saturday, but it's been adopted to be the Sunday. So you know what? You're all hypocrites. Fuck you. You work on weekends anyway. So (laughs) we're going to be talking about some wonderful, cool Snap-related things. New cards coming out because we have had Dakin. We'll talk about Dakin. Talk about uh, X-23, Lady Deathstrike, Silver Samurai, and then I have one other card I want to talk about in a, in relation to Lady Deathstrike, but we'll get there in a bit. And then, of course, we have discourse with the Marvel Snap community that we get to talk about a lot, as well as some f- design philosophy moving forward. So first and foremost, hey, Chris, what do you want to talk about first? You want to go tackle new cards? You want to talk about Dakin? Yeah, let's talk about Dakin. How do you how do you pronounce it? I've seen so much discourse around around this topic. I know I know the actual pronunciation is supposed to be um, uh, Dakin. Is Dokken. I think in for because it's it's supposed someone said the Japanese pronunciation is supposed to almost rhyme with walk in like a walk in mm. fridge. I think I think that's what I saw, or maybe they said in that tweet it's not pronounced that way. This is how it's pronounced. I don't remember, <laughs> so I could be spreading misinformation. I apologize. I mean, look if if you know the actual pronunciation, just tell us in the comments down below. I'm going to interchangeably say Dakin, 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 because you know what? They, they'll, they'll know who we're I don't talking know. about. I don't know who it is. Um, I want to say uh, Big D. That's, that's, that's what we'll talk about. Big D. He's Wolverine's son. How, how has your experience been with uh, Big D? Uh, so I actually hit infinite with Big D. I went from 73 to 100 playing a single deck, and that was a Dakin Deadpool list. That was really? That's all I played. Um, I can show you the list in a second if I can find it. it. Uh, I did tweet it. Look at that. So for oh, those, man, you, I can't, you got too many tweets. I can't find I got, it. I got too many tweets. What you mean on Twitter? Oh, they're not called tweets anymore. By the way, they're called posts. We're on <laughs> X now. We're in the new world oh, order of I X. I was like, even change it, but yeah, I'm looking right here. It says post. That's stupid. But yeah, I played Deadpool. Um, I can tell you uh, right off rip, it had, uh, of course, you had Deadpool, something like that. I did run Hulkbuster, which was awesome. Um, it was a, it makes Deadpool a wonderful 1-6 immediately, which is pretty sick. Uh, also, I found the found the tweet. I found it. it. Took like two seconds. I don't know what you're looking for. Are you scrolling through my tweets itself, or are you trying to go through? Because uh, I click, I go, I go to media immediately. Oh, you went to media and yeah, that's a lot Wait, hold faster. Because I post pictures. No, that's a leader list. What's I just this? sent. You, I just sent. It's a, from August tenth. Is when I posted it. I just sent it to you. But yeah, uh, I used it the, from the symbiotic. Yeah, symbiotic relationship. It's Deadpool, Nova, Bucky, Carnage, Wolverine, Killmonger, Venom, Dakin, 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 uh, Deathlock, Hulkbuster, Taskmaster, and Death. So some notable absences would be like there's no Null, for example. There's no Arnim Zola to do any things like that with Deadpool. There's no Shuri. Um, there's no Forge. Nothing like that for like the Deadpool stuff. It's very straightforward. I've liked it a lot. Uh, it's the list I found to be the most consistent because Dakin has been uh, a great bridge 
for those plays where sometimes you just don't have the right uh, setup to destroy stuff or it's like the destroy stuff is kind of bad. Like you have Venom in hand and then like Bucky. I'm like, I don't want to waste my Venom on Bucky. Uh, so you just throw out Dakin and then go from there to like essentially bridge the gap of your curve. Um, no null, he's not necessary. Also, you notice there's no Squirrel Girl. Um, Squirrel Girl is a great way to go on turn one and gain priority immediately to go into your Deadpool play afterwards. Um, also makes death cheaper with Killmonger and stuff like that, more fodder. Uh, I found getting death very cheap is not very necessary anymore because death is a backup plan as opposed to, or just gravy, as opposed to like, oh, I'm trying to get death every time. Because nine times out of 10, the way I win is a big old Deadpool on six and a Taskmaster. That's it. Also, you'll like this deck, Chris. You know why? Because you like bounce. And the reason this deck was really good is because my experience with bounce has taught me priority is very important. So now I've really honed in and focused on singular lanes mm-hmm. with my Deadpool stuff. And trying to dodge priority as much as possible. So that way, when my opponent's running Shang-Chi, going into turn six doesn't work. I just go 36 Deadpool, 36 Taskmaster, win, you're done. Uh, <clears throat> been very effective. Interesting. Yeah. No, I no, I like this. I like this list. Did you is this your own little special brew or did you see it somewhere? Um, I saw I think I saw a bunch of different Dakin lists everywhere. Um and this was it was either an existing list or like I changed like a card or just basically looked at like these four different deck lists and said, I like this one. Mm-hmm. Um, I like this card from this one and did something like that. I don't remember uh, specifically, but it is, it's the credits not belonging to me besides piloting it. Um, I didn't come up with this. Obviously, it's also not that intricate of a list to even say i came up with this brew because it's just like destroy shit everywhere it's like yeah no shit bro you threw in a dakin and called it a day i guess the hulkbuster is quote-unquote innovative but hulkbuster on deadpool is fucking cracked by the way yeah i have yet to try that my my initial like uh those of you follow me on twitter i know you saw it brad but yeah i was trying because i i the last two seasons i haven't played the season pass card until after i hit infinite and mm-hmm. like that's when i just said hey send me your decks i hit infinite and uh i tested a bunch of them. I was, everybody's like oh this is dope this is dope i didn't want to do surfer list just because i don't like playing surfer and all of them sucked all of them <laughs> sucked they were so bad they were just so bad like I, I don't know. There, there's like sometimes there's like a deck you like look at it and you're like, oh, that looks pretty neat, innovative. And then you get into a game, you're like, what was I thinking? Right? Like you just like start playing it and you're like, this is terrible. Right before we started recording, I was testing out this new list. It was so bad. It was so, so, so bad. And I just think people lie. Anyways, my favorite form is discard for Dakin. Uh, I like that. Um, the video I just put up. For like 10 decks that people hit infinite with, I shared the discard list that I like. Um, it runs like Nakia and, uh, and it has like Collector and Swarm and Colleen Wing and stuff. But buffing Dakin and the Swarms with Nakia is sick. I really like that. But, but yeah, there's so much destroy going on right now. Some people are countering, uh, the destroy aspect like me. Yep. Like I like doing that. So, um, yeah, I've been more of a fan of the, the discard route. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it's been... I, I do well, think that the discard route is probably... Well, let, me, let me phrase this carefully. The discard route is where Dakin himself is probably stronger and more consistent. However, I think the destroy version of decks are stronger inherently over discard decks because of things like Spider-Ham and the meta, stuff like that. Now, I do want to ask you real quick, quick little tangent. Mm. In the most recent patch that we had, or, or no, OTA, the OTA about Spider-Ham, right? Where they, they changed to a 2-2. They did say that mm. they don't like the interaction oh, yeah. of like taking or seemingly taking things like APOC and death like out of metas supposedly because of that interaction. And they said they had something in mind for a future mm. update. What do you think that could be? And also, do you think it's necessary? Did yeah, they say in that, that? OTA. I never saw that. Either, uh, oh, really? I need to I'll look that up. Um, no, like, I don't know. I never thought, I never thought Spider-Ham was too OP. Like, I play 
a ton of Spire Ham. I haven't played them as much recently with the decks I've been trying out, but like... I don't know. There, I can't tell you how many times I have played him. Like I played him a little in one of the lists I was running. I think the the anti destroy list I was running. And Spider Ham's just he can screw you too, right? Like you'll hit uh, with so many people running destroy lists. I've hit destroyers, just giving them a free six fifteen. You know what I mean? I've hit some infinos people just running like tribunal lists or like the double mm. she hulk, like the she not list and stuff like that. So like I yeah I don't know. It, it's just weird. I think there was a lot of noise about Spider Ham. Maybe they have um, some metrics on the back end, but like as a as an avid Spider Ham player, like I just haven't. I like I, I I just see its downsides too. You yeah, know what I'm I mean? trying to find that OTA itself um, here. July twentieth OTA news. Um, let's see if it says specifically on this website the things. Uh, uh, Spider Ham. Spider Ham has been a gener- uh, generically strong card in a few we a few decks. So it might surprise you to see them here with bounce. Uh, blah blah. blah. Uh, we're unhappy with uh, the extent of the damage Spider Ham has done to a few archetypes of revolving around cool high cost cards like She Hulk, Death, and especially Apocalypse. We'll have a future adjustment adjustment down the road to Spider Ham's behavior that directly addresses that. But for now, we're going to just make him a little less efficient and see how much that reduces his play rate. Huh. Well, with that, like I'm looking at it too, and with that. I'm almost wondering if that's changed now because I guarantee Spider Ham's play rate has plummeted. Like I don't, I don't see it nearly as much. But um, I've played against discard decks with Spider Ham, and there have been countless times where uh, they don't have yeah. Apocalypse in their hand yet, or whatever. Right? Like Spider Ham takes like a little bit of strategy. When he first came out, you and I were talking, and like I think ideally you want to play him on like turn three yep. or turn four ish uh so they have a couple draws you know so like that way they don't have high cost cards they could play and like you could possibly hit it but um but yeah like i wonder i wonder if untapped shows like i think it does it says like what his popularity is but as far as how they would change him i'm like running through scenarios i don't know because his whole he thing said, is taking away their ability so like popularity according to untapped igg See, that's like nothing, yeah. right? Um, wait, 2.3 in weight in Conquest um, or I ranked? just clicked on the card itself. That's weird. Mine's showing Maybe 8. I'm looking 6. at Conquest? No, I'm right, looking at... Conquest. Oh, Conquest is only at 0. 0.9 I'm on my screen. Two point, maybe it's averaging it? I don't fucking know, dude. Says last updated two hours ago. <laughs> it might be our filters. Our filters well, might be different. Why would it affect? Fil- I mean, I clicked on the card itself. Why should it show? Uh, so oh, look at the top right. It says stats based oh, on. Oh yeah, mine's blank. mine's uh, says, latest patch ranks ninety to ninety nine and three thousand plus. Oh, so my mine's higher because I'm ranks uh, seventy okay. to ninety nine. So, like, basically anybody who, like, reset from uh, 100. So, he's at 8.6. But in Conquest, in uh, Gold and Collection Level 3000+, plus, he's only at 0.9%. I find 9%. that to be incorrect. And we still don't... Not, not incorrect of, like, hmm? wrong stats. I, I mean, like, in motivation of, like, why would you not play Spider-Ham in a Conquest deck for the information there? Yeah. Yeah, I don't also, know. Like, I'd um, like to say he's perfect I'm also at curious. Draw, by the way. Yeah. Perfect, like, like perfectly, like the, uh, yeah. The, the balance and everything around him. I, I think he was way too good as a one drop. I think as a two drop, he's in that perfect spot because there's genuine competition. There. Yeah, I'm. I'm wondering. Um, I think we've discussed it before, like how much they're looking at conquest versus ranked, and how they're making their mm-hmm. balancing decisions, right? If something's showing up more on the ladder compared to Conquest and everything. I also think the weekend missions have probably really Dude, skewed yeah, the weekend their stats missions are, too, right? This is why you need a genuine unranked mode because then you can just look at like, like I don't know, like you. I guarantee you'd see a, a much larger increase of like those weekend mission cards like Phoenix Force, Nimrod and stuff like that. Uh, you'll see a big jump for those weekend missions in play rate in an unranked mode. And then everything else should stay mostly the same with maybe minor dip ups 
to really help, you know, cause like that, that's, that does, I do agree with you. I think that might throw a wrench into some, uh, some ideas, but I guess they could also exclude weekends. Yeah. Well, I was wondering that too, but like that, that would be difficult as well because how many people get most of their gaming yeah. in on the weekends? You know what I mean? So like, cause I was like, oh, well, I guess they could filter it, you know, but like that might be difficult as well. So yeah, I don't, I don't know what their solution is, or maybe they have some trick on the back end or maybe they like account for it some t- somehow when looking at the data. I'm not a data analyst, but. But yeah, because uh, yeah, every weekend it's going to be nuts, um, especially for like season pass stats and everything. Uh, but yeah, but anyways, anyways, the next card, next card. What's coming out this it's week? Lady, Lady Death Strike. Strike. She's a 5-3 on reveal. Destroy all other cards at this location that have less power than she does. No. Are, are you getting it? <laughs> uh, no, not at yeah. all. I'm not even, yeah, I'm not even going to attempt to. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I so I said I told myself I wasn't going to open any spotlights this week because I had no reason to. They are all variants for me. But you know what I did? I opened all the variants. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, yeah, you got a problem. I don't know how many of our dear listeners follow Brad on Twitter. Follow him, Brad Zuffer. Like at at. He tweeted out, <laughs> this motherfucker tweeted out, he's like, hey, does anybody know if they, if they, with this patch, they made it so you have to hold yeah. the spotlights? Because you accidentally opened one, so you really wanted this. He asked that question. I'm like, oh, I'll help Brad out. I'll ask around. And like five minutes later, he's like, never mind, tested it for you. They didn't release it with the patch. Like this dude is just so, opening these things so fucking willy I'm so bad at hoarding things. Like the, I am, I am the, I am the perfect <laughs> like clientele or like target audience for second day because I fucking hate hoarding <laughs> things in every video game. When I get a currency, like I was so bad about this with GTA Online when I played that with friends a lot, like a decade ago when that game fucking released. Literally in 2013. <laughs> um, so, but with that, I'm like, anytime I got enough, I'm like, I have a goal in mind. I want to get a thing. And then I'm like, I want to get the money. And then I get the money and I'm like, but then why would I go and just buy each individual thing of armor and ammo? I'm just going to hit the button that says buy all armor and ammo for like $40,000. And I'm like, perfect. And then I'm like, well, my money's gone. Like, I, I, it's like, I'm so bad with like hoarding money or like things in games. I was just amazed at how fast it was. Like you didn't even give me like Cause, five cause minutes to get you an answer. Thing just like glowing. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I hate I hate having like little yeah. badges and stuff, right? Like uh, where it's showing it. So like right let now, me, I have like ten saved up, but like, like ones for like the, um... work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, <laughs> so, anyways, Lady Deathstrike. Uh, yeah, no, this is one that I'm passing on as well. My strategy is for cards that I don't want to play is or i don't think are going to be good it's just watch people this is what i recommend to everybody out there everybody's like oh should i get this should i get this should i get this wait like f- wait longer than brad does to yeah. open a spotlight cache like watch some videos well i actually recommend watching streams since everybody makes highlight videos that are clickbait and like oh this is the best card ever but the 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 last card i was going to pass on was legion and he ended up being like yeah, amazing, right? So uh, maybe that'll happen with Lady Death Strike, well, but I don't know. So I'm going to give it. Oh yeah, a few I'm days. One, okay, I'm actually passing on this week because I'm. I was like, let's see what the variants are. Because basically, when I opened that Galactus, when I did the test, and I was like, well, I like the other two variants quite a bit. So fuck it, let's go for them. And I got all of them back to back. Didn't get the thousand tokens. I'm like, perfect. We did it. We got the cool variants. I'm happy. Now, this one is Lady Deathstrike, Modok, and Stature. For those of you who don't, who don't have Stature, might be worth attempting, I don't know. But then I look at the variants, and I'm like, the Lady Deathstrike's the only one I like, and the other ones I don't particularly care for. What are the variants? Oh, I, yeah. Is that, a, is that a Scotty Young Modok? Uh, it is a baby. Is that a baby? It is a baby Modok, which I'm not a fan of it. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm just not. I'm not gonna give a shit. <sighs> yeah. Meanwhile, meanwhile, the variants. Yeah, this, this, meanwhile, the variants what? for uh, the following week with X23. Those are all amazing. I will go for that. So I'm gonna hoard this next week for that one. <laughs> yeah. The, real quick, this stature one. I actually used it on quite a few thumbnails. I was like, oh, cool, a different stature. But the more I've used it in thumbnails, I'm like, I really don't like it. She looks yeah. very like long. 
and like like she was like stretched out and uh yeah so i'm like also the cat is more in frame than Um, she is it feels like it's it's just a weird perspective i I think it's fine it's just it's not my cup of tea you know yeah hold on let me see what the variants are for x23 week oh yeah oh dude that silk but i really want venomized silk silk yeah that's awesome i want that one i got the baby silk by the way i fucking got that one in random cash oh I usually like baby variants, but that one I don't like. I think because it doesn't take up much of the uh, the card. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like very like compact. But, but the um, Ryan. But yeah, the this Ryan uh, this new one. I love her art. I love yeah, her Spider Ham, and I'm like, I need more of hers. Now, to be fair, I have a potential hot take about her art because I love all of it. I love all of her art. <laughs> it's amazing. I got that bundle. With uh, with uh, the rescue and uh, Scarlet Witch and stuff, you know which one I don't like, like at all, Jeff. Which one? I really, I don't like the, the Jeff, Jeff one. one. Why? A little, a little also, too cluttered. It's just the is shape of him is? is weird. It just it, it feels like the it feels like I'm. It's like a, like watching. You ever seen those pictures of like those frames of like Phineas and Ferb where he turns perfectly in line with the like straight on and it it's terrifying. Oh yeah, yeah where that's some how I feel like, about yeah. that one. I feel like the the straight on look is a bit weird. Um, I think if Jeff's body looked like look at Nebula here, she she's a little bit angled to the right. You see the dimensions of her entire body, right? And like she looks like a thing, right? Same thing with like Spider Ham. The Spider Ham yeah. is fantastic, by the way. It's an amazing variant. If the Jeff one was on that same kind of like perspective, I'd be all in on it. But it's just it's too um like Japanese Hello Kitty to me. Is I guess the, and that's just not my my vibe. Yeah. I I think I I appreciate the art. I like this artist quite a bit. I want a full deck with all of her stuff. Uh so maybe it would be a great start. But that silk one's fucking insane. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I just don't know if I'm gonna waste a cat. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, let's before we talk about, about X23, Lady, Lady Deathstrike. Something just popped up. Her, unfortunately. Oh, okay, Lady Deathstrike. I'm passing. I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna watch and see how she goes. Because people might do something insane with her. That okay. I'm not. Thinking let's of. let's walk through it real quick. Okay. It. The most you can get her to because I've 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 thought about this. Okay. Echo on one. Zabu on two. Wong behind Echo. Uh-huh. Shuri behind Wong, Death Strike, and then Zola. Okay? That is the best line yeah. you can do, from what I can understand. That makes her a 12. Uh-huh. Here's... Well, no, if you hit if you hit uh, Wong... Wait. Yeah, yeah, it would be a 12. I was like, wait, wouldn't it be 24? No, because uh, it's not Black Panther. So Wong wouldn't buffer again if Zola hit yeah, Wong here- and then her. Right. Here's my it problem. Like hit two things. Because as cool as that sounds, being like, oh, hit this lane, zool it, and hit the other two lanes, and have two twelves over here, and pretty much guaranteed the win. Well, how often do you play games in Marvel Snap and see your opponent generate more than twelve? All the time. Yeah. Well, think about Darkhawk, right? Like Darkhawks now usually get into like twelve, fourteen. Yeah. You know. And, and remember what, what gonna, I said. What like, I just think the juice not is worth not is not worth the squeeze. Basically, the, my idea of this was very simple: is Lady Deathstrike on one hand good enough to be a generic five drop that you slot into many different decks? I think I think no. Of course okay? not. On the other hand, is yeah. she good enough to build a deck around her and create a new archetype? I also say no because the ceiling seems not <laughs> worth it. It's cool when it will go off, but it doesn't seem worth it. And here's the third thing. That mystery third card I want to talk about, besides all the stuff getting released today, or and I got in this episode talking about this month, Eliath, who's been recently data mined to be a six drop yeah. now, not a five drop, but even so, does what she does, albeit slightly different. It's about on that turn, right? Kind of like a juggernaut, but for destroy. But it's still better because the context behind what Eliath can do is win you games. I don't think she's going to win you as many games as Eliath will because getting priority and uh, especially imagine this. Okay. You wave on three, you Galactus on four, you, you go 
You yeah, go all no, it's gonna be a mess. behind that Galactus to gain priority. You play your death. You play your null. You play whatever's fucking huge behind him. Okay, get priority, guarantee it. And you're like, your opponent's like, oh, easy, snap. I have Shang Chi. You play a Lyath, destroy their Shang Chi before it ever flips, and you win. That sounds insane. And that's just in one deck. We're not even thinking about the general applications of just like, like it's like a leader type of situation. I'm winning these two lanes, slam it. I guarantee you win in that lane. I know you can't win that other lane. Like, w- that's amazing. Yeah, I no, I, I don't know if it's amazing or just the most annoying <laughs> thing I've ever heard. Like, I'm doing my best to enjoy this month because next month, so many people are going to buy that card. Let's just every person who loved playing Galactus is the most annoying people you could imagine in Marvel Snap. The emote spamming assholes are all saving their fucking caches and tokens for a life, and I'm going to want to murder myself. I, like, I will, it's I will be respect so God Galactus awful. players more that do the Goliath that the Goliath or not Goliath, uh, the Goliath players with Galactus more so than the Spider-Man thing, because also flavorfully, it makes more sense. Spider-Man is never going to be a herald of Galactus, but a the big purple floaty smoke monster in the sky that fucks you up very well could be a herald of Galactus. Let me see. So like with a he's yeah. an on reveal, a Cosmo. Fucker, so of course there's, there's counterplay or, no, no, would a Cosmo? Yeah, yeah. So, but the thing is, if they Galactus, they're always going to have priority, well, right? Because for Galactus to go off, yeah, they yeah. Have so to if have it's priority. a Galactus on five, have priority going now. Um, if you have priority going into five, Galactus flips, you get it. But then your opponent flips like a Dark Hawk in that lane, and it's bigger. Then the Cosmo could work. Yeah. And the way yeah. I'm thinking is Galactus on four, win it that way, and then just stack as much power as you can. Uh, but then that's that window of where the Cosmo needs to come down for the other player. But then, then your Shang Chi doesn't. Yeah, Galactus, work. but Galactus on. F- yeah, but Galactus on four to get your death that low I don't, would be difficult. I don't think that so. would There's mean, a lot of early stuff. That would mean on turns one and two. On turns one and two, you'd have to have a lot of stuff on the board because you're dropping yeah, wave you're on probably three. Going, um, right. So like what you just you go Yondu. That's play one card destroys another that's two down she's already down to six and then then once uh-huh. uh, then you play if you play one more card right then those two blowing up gets her down to a four that's fine just playing her alone behind a galactus on five that's that's that can be enough yeah yeah that might work that might work. We'll see. We'll see. I'm sure someone annoying like yourself will try it out. I'm going to hit infinite that season that. with a live <laughs> but, uh, Let's go. <laughs> but, uh, but no, with Lady Deathstrike, like, it's crazy because, like, we just got Legion, which is a 5-8. And, like, so even if Legion isn't going to, like, win a game for you, it's, like, an yeah. insane stat line for a 5 cost. You know what I mean? Whereas Lady Deathstrike, like, hers is kind of dependent on her power. But... It, but, like, if she's not doing something valuable for you, she's just a 5-3. You know what I mean? And that's one of the reasons why, uh, what's her face, uh, uh, Magic yes, wasn't yes, all that yes, great. Yes. You know? Because she was a 5-3, and, like, it's just like, okay, well, I do this, but, you know? So, so yeah, we'll see. Like, someone might figure something out. I've really loved the innovation in the community lately. I think there's been a lot of, like, interesting the new decks deck coming out. Sick. And I've really enjoyed yeah, I've been, I've just enjoyed experimenting with so many different decks. There's a lot of terrible ones that people swear are good, but uh, so yeah, I'm hoping I'm wrong about Lady Deathstrike, but also I'm hoping not because I like being able to save my caches, you know. So, um, but yeah, but now I want to talk to you because we were talking about Ryan, and I don't know if you saw this, oh, but about Ryan. a week ago there was something that popped up on Twitter that was interesting, and it was, uh, and I don't know how many of our dear uh, listeners know this, but. The artists are not getting any kind of like residuals, royalties, anything like that from their art. And a lot of people are like, what the hell? Like, I want to support this artist. That's one of the reasons. Like, I just like their art. So even if I'm kind of iffy on certain bundles, I just want to support them. And they're not getting squat. Uh, we found this out from Art Germ tweeting this. And then that kind of like a lot of us shared Some, it. Then someone and, I think uh, Nina, yeah, uh, like, added so, Ryan. Um, also, am I pronouncing her name correctly? Is, is it's, it's R I A N. Is it Ryan or is it like R- Rianne? I think it's Ryan. It could but be Rianne. I could be wrong. Uh, could Rianne. be Rianne. Um, yeah. So I apologize. Like I've been saying it wrong. Yeah. It's just my brain sees that spelling and I'm like immediately go to it. 
Um, again, I'm still white. I may be dating someone who's Peruvian, and my Spanish is, you know, un poquito. Uh, and I, I, you know, it's just it's it's not <laughs> in my brain is like got it. So, but anyway, uh, Nina uh, tweeted at her, and she confirmed that. Um, now, to play yeah. devil's advocate, because this is the case, I would assume maybe borderlining a bit uh, like optimistic here. I would assume that the upfront costs for artists such as uh, Ryan, uh, you know, Dan hip and these, these artists that are being commissioned to create original art for a lot of these variants, they're getting paid a bit more upfront for the commissions to compensate for that. Now, otherwise, things like Todd McFarlane's uh, Spider-Man cover or existing, you know, covers of like you know, Peach Momoko stuff and things like that. I think those are just like that's just fair game because it's under a, a Marvel property and they have rights to use them whenever they want. That's where I'd be like, kind of sucks they don't get royalties for those. But the ones that are being commissioned to create original art specifically for Marvel Snap has not been on comic covers before. Think they might be getting a bit more upfront to compensate yeah i would yeah because that's the other thing i want people to know like i would assume uh artists not getting paid the way we thought they were is a marvel thing and not a marvel snap thing right like so they're just using the art that's already like owned you know whatever but yeah so i'm curious because like dan hip um ryan and uh who else maybe max greck like i think they make specific art just for marvel snap so they might be I don't know. Somebody, there's there's other people who just like do like yeah. they love the variants. I can't believe nobody's like interviewed one of these artists. So, uh, but yeah, because I'd be curious about that. But anyways, I don't know what the solution is. I was thinking like they should have some kind of, and which would help creators as well, some kind of creator code, right? Where you could like if I buy a bundle, I could put in the artist creator code so they do get some kind of kickback. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, like I don't know, or maybe there's just a bunch of legal stuff and they got to go through some new contracts or something like that. But but yeah, just to raise a little awareness about that. I don't know if you have any solutions in mind. I mean, unionize. Yeah, yeah, because that, yeah, that's one of the reasons I think uh, it was interesting is because all the stuff going on with the writers yeah. and the actors and stuff like that. So, so yeah, if you guys have ideas, uh, uh, leave us a little comment. But but yeah, so X23. Uh, what's what's her ability? Whenever again? she's Before destroyed I or discarded, re- regenerator at a random location, you gain plus one energy the next turn. You getting it? Probably. I'm gonna. I mean, I'm gonna save. I'm gonna save up oh. my caches from next week and try to get four of them and then put them towards that week because I also want those variants that they show. Um. So yeah, I, I'll I'll pick yeah. her up. I think any card that generates or cheats mana in some way, or I'm sorry, cheats energy, uh, like Zabu, like Sarah, like old Quinjet, uh, especially old Quinjet, right? Um, and, uh, like time stone Psylocke. These are all, there's a reason they're all like mostly undercosted or like understated, I guess I should say, um, relative to their abilities. Uh, they're you know, like Zabu's not a two, four for a reason, right? Psylocke's a two, one for a reason, things like that. So, that's where I'm interested in her. Now she's going to be like decent. The flip side of that though, is I do think that unlike these other cards, there's a lot more play to counter them. Um, being X 23 with things like Cosmo, things like armor, stuff like that. Right. Where with things like Sarah, she comes down to five. You're not going to counter that. It's already too late, and they're going to have their big explosive play. You might be able to counter what they do with those uh, that extra energy, um, like with like a Cosmo or something, right? Or like Shang Chi or whatever. Um, or let's mm-hmm. look at like old Quinjet with the zero mana, uh, zero energy stones or uh, for Thanos. You can't counter that except with things like you mm-hmm. know. Um, going to be like mostly Enchantress or uh, Killmonger. No one is running uh, Electra, so let's not even consider that. Um, but by the time you get to that energy cost being three or four to stop the uh, Quinjet, they've already thrown four stones into Lockjaw over like after moving one with a space stone and having like 30 power there. So there's no countering that. Where X-23, again, armor, Cosmo, cards that are not just like narrowly a counter, 
it's a blanket counter in the sense of like, it also shuts down the rest of the deck that she goes in. So I think she's going to be good, but I don't think she's going to be as good as people think because purely there's a lot more play to counter her. And then on top of that, the most you're doing is getting that extra little wiggle room of like, oh, I can play a Deadpool this turn and destroy it with like the Nova and stuff like that. Or I can go into like the Null on five, Zol on six play. Like it's going to probably make the deck a bit better, but also destroy is a very tight list that I do wonder if it like how you find the room for her um without like messing up other stuff because then once you get to the point of like having all these the things you want to destroy and then all the things that destroy stuff you don't have much room for like the stuff that's left over of like the things that put your deck over the top like in my deadpool list for example i don't know what i would cut for for her the one i took the infinite like do you cut dakin like instantaneously he's just replaced by her um but then you run into mm-hmm. the thing that I thought Dak was nice for. Once I get to turn three and I have no really great way to like utilize destroy stuff and she's on board. Yes, I get the extra energy, but I'm not drawing anything good anyway. Dak was a nice pivot point to be like, okay, at least I can get a three eight for the late game and then like build up other stuff anyway and get extra fodder for venom or whatever or a carnage. So I'm optimistic about her being like decent, but I'm also cautious of, you know, saying this is going to be too good or needs to be changed or anything like that. Cause I think she's not going to be as good as people think, but she's going to be good. Yeah. I've, uh, this is probably the most hype I've seen around like a card, like, uh, for the season pass giveaway. I, you know, I had people reply to the, the tweet and X 23, X 23 popped up the most. And I would assume like, I think Dakin probably was second. Uh, I'm pretty sure Dakin was second. But um, anyways, yeah, so, like, personally, I'm on the fence about it. Like, unless I hear people talking um, more about it or I might just do what I'm doing with um, Lady Deathstrike to watch because, like, I can – like, I know generating extra energy is beneficial, but kind of like what you're talking about. And I'm like, okay, well, what about, like, the discard route too? But, like, still, is, like, one energy going to be that much? And I think the the real way to use her is just to yes. destroy her yes. over and over and over again. But like you're saying, like – destroy not only do you have this to have to find like the right cards to go in there right the right amount of destroy and the right amount of cards that are benefiting from it but um so yeah i'm 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 like i don't know i'm not i'm not very sure about this one um but here's something i was wondering too i wonder if you're just gonna see like if she were to drop to series four or something like that and she was just more accessible almost like a stature like what if you put her out there as just kind of like a a card to go along with like um you know a kitty a sunspot or a nebula right where it's like hey if you want to if you want to you know killmonger you're also going to be helping me out in a little bit of a different way but again i don't know how beneficial it would be right uh it would have to find like the right deck but just kind of like a little bait like hey your opponent has to like make a strategic decision on whether or not they want to destroy your own. Yeah, I, you know? I think if I was on the other side of that where you presented X-23 and then you also had a four-power sunspot, like a, like a five-power nebula, I'd be like, yeah. okay, bye. Get out of here. I'd rather, I'd rather give you the yeah. one energy for the like energy you've um, so, like, you know put into those other cards. Real quick, I feel like we do have to touch on this. The miscommunication and the mess-up regarding the series... Don't, announcement don't, does don't do it, Brad. Like it. As originally, they announced in oh the actual God. blog post on the official website stating that uh, X-23 and uh, Silver Samurai were going to be in Series 4. And then, oh, no, 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 not X-23. I'm sorry. Uh, Lady Deathstrike and Silver Samurai. And then X-23 is a Series 5 card. And I was like, that's awesome. That's awesome. Like, uh, I, I even, for a split second, I was like, maybe I will get Lady Deathstrike. 3,000? That's not bad. You know, to mess around with. And then they said, whoops, sorry. Well, actually, first it said, first it got switched to being, sorry, guys, our bad. Uh, actually, Silver Samurai is going to be Series 5. And then a second time is like, whoops, our bad again. All of them are Series 5. And it's like, and then there's Fucking no brutal. series drop this month either. So you basically presented the idea of like, at least for the community's perspective of like, okay, on one hand, 
they'll have these more accessible cards going straight into Series 4. And then if they don't do that, they should have a Series drop to compensate. Then you had a month where you did neither. And everything Series 5, everything remains still expensive. So that's not a great look, and I'm a little disappointed in that, especially with um, this card or this season being as hype as it is with a lot of these cards, mostly uh, 23 and even Silver Samurai. I think Silver Samurai is really cool and i'm interested in trying them in a dark hawk deck with uh, black bolt stature um and maybe running uh dakin in that list too to be able to have a nice curve in that sense um i don't know we'll see but i'm, I'm very interested in it. it sucks though now this is one of those times where that that uh, that whole thing really really upset me because they made me look like an asshole, right? They made me, the uh, the big Marvel Snap shill, look like an asshole, right? Because when this was data mined, everything yeah. showed a Series 5, and everybody was, like, talking shit leading up to it. Then it came out because, like, we can't take anything from data mines as gospel until it's out, right? And uh, I was like, ha-ha, see? Fucking cut Marvel Snap uh, some slack, blah, 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 and then screw up number one and then screw up number two. Now I'm sitting here looking like an asshole in front of everybody, right? But, um, but yeah, like no series drop, nothing. Um, and, and especially like, yeah, with the two cards that I'm like really on the fence about, like, I'm just like, no, like this is just, I don't know. I'm not going to be opening that many spotlight caches, uh, this month because, because aside from that, that screw up, now we move on to Silver Samurai, and this is actually the card that I'm most yeah, excited for. I agree. For. I'm on the same. This boat. card right here is, is a must get for me because I don't know. Like I just feel I it, it blew my mind again. Going back to my um my giveaway because I had like six or seven hundred people enter the giveaway, and they had to reply with what card. Silver Samurai like did not pop up at all, and I'm just like like it's blowing my fucking mind. Here, let me let me go on a little rant real quick. So stature when stature was series five. Barely anybody got her, but I remember sitting there like this card is amazing, but it's, it's a series four yep. at best, right? Then she dropped a series four immediately, immediately one of the best lists, right? Uh, but the issue is Black Bolt is the only really good enabler of her. Uh, people were trying Moon Knight, but a lot of times you were like discarding your own stature or something like that, you know? So we just did the stature Black Bolt thing instead of Moon Knight. And now Silver Samurai is coming out, which is a, another guaranteed good statted enabler for stature, which is still like if you go to um, Untapped, it's like the top meta deck, right? And like nobody's talking about Silver Samurai. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you people? You know? Uh, so, yeah, I am so stoked. But So here's what I have in my mind. And I got to kind of work it out. But you get Silver Samurai, Black Bolt, Stature, Colleen Wing, Storm, and maybe Nakia, right? Not Storm, nah, Swarm. Swarm and Nakia, right? So you buff your stuff, and maybe Dakin fits in that list as well. But, like, that is just, like, power right there. Just, like, so much power and disruption. If you combine it with uh, Dark Hawk, you're tossing rocks in their decks. I got to sit it out and sit so and map it out. But it sounds pretty to dope to me. Let people know. Because it's easy to confuse this, because I did several times upon first reading the card. Okay. Remember, this can create some awkward situations because I do want to try this in a dark hawk shell with, you know, stature black bolt. However, the worry with how to build this deck and the issue with that is the fact that each player discards the lowest power card from their hand, not the lowest cost card. Oh, so yeah. If That's dark hawk's in your okay. hand, he's a zero. He's the lowest power. You will discard your Dark Hawk when you play Samurai. So you have to be careful with what you do and how you build this list. Um, so Swarm makes sense to put in your deck if it is consistently going to be the lowest cost card or lowest uh, powered card in your hand. And if you're hitting with Nikia and some of them buffing it, and then you do you draw into Dakin, for example, if that's in the list. And then mm. it kind of messes up your curve a little bit because now you're like a 50-50 shot of hitting Dakin or Swarm now because um, you draw on a Dakin as a four, uh, four power. Swarm got buffed to a four power from Nakia. Um, so there are some issues with the card that I've kind of thought about. I do think it's going to be good, but you think you have right. to... There's a monkey wrench in my, yeah, in my plan. So you, you just gotta, the, the, the building has to be a bit more intricate than we previously thought. Um, there's got to be something... 
Uh, I mean, I think he works perfectly with Dakin. Like Dakin on three, him on four, right? Is um, is amazing. Yeah. But you got to basically fine tune your deck and be okay. If I'm going to go in this route, I got to be sure that uh, that even though there are cards that I could potentially discard in the late game with that, I got to try to get it to where those ones are played earlier. And then the ones that I can target are the ones going to be more likely to be my hand. It's just the dark hawk thing worries me. Yeah. Some. Yeah, some something that you'd have that you could do a, a real nice curve would be Colleen Wing to hit your storms, Dakin mm-hmm. on three, right, and then Silver Samurai on four. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? So you could you yeah. could go that route, um, but yeah, because then I'm wondering like if you did run a Darkhawk list and now the list is just getting too bulky, like you could because you might you're probably running Zabu too. You could squeeze in a little uh, Ghost yeah, Rider. You could. Right, so if you did hit your dark hawk, just whoop out, just now, bring him back. I think so, he has a very good chance of being solid in a regular, straightforward discard list with things like Gambit and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Because even with the Ghost Rider thing too, because on the flip side of that, you're hitting your opponent's stuff too. So in a meta where there's a lot of dark hawks going around, and you're able to go Zabu into that and then hit their oh, dark yeah. hawk that they want to hold on to a bit for the later turns. Cause typically you don't want to play dark hawk too early unless you have backup, like a cosmos or like that. You can protect it behind because Shang Chi is a thing. Uh, or maybe better yet in those kind of lists where like you hit their Shang Chi and you're trying to play a big thing later or something like that. He has great application for attacking the opponent's hand too. It's just, so it's just trying to determine once we get our hands on it, if the hitting your own card versus hitting your opponent's card, where the impact level is between the two and what the ratio is. Because uh, that's that's the cutoff for me where I'm trying yeah. to figure that out. No, and then when you, when you bring that up too, it makes me even more excited about it. Think, especially with just so much destroy in the meta right now, and I don't think it's going anywhere because of the nature of all the cards this month. Think about how many uh, nulls yeah. you're going to hit. Think about how many Arnim Zolas mm. you're going to hit. You see what I'm saying? Like... Silver Samurai is going to be my shit. Like, just, um, like, I think it's important to remember months and months and months ago, uh, people were, I think it was when Stature got popular and people were asking Glenn, like, hey, why aren't there more cards that, like, enable Stature and stuff? And he was saying, like, disrupting your opponent's hand like that is a very powerful effect and we don't want yeah. him to get it out of control, right? So now they're releasing Silver Samurai, I'm like, you just gave me you gave me a little, uh, a little, uh, a little treat, you know? <laughs> so I don't know. I think, I think the car is going to be great. And I'm probably not even thinking of the best possibilities, but, um, but yeah, it's going to mess, mess people up. Even hitting like a, a devil dino, you know what I mean? Like if that's a three cost in their hand, like you're going to hit some really good stuff. Um, and like, maybe it's not even great to play them with Zabu, like, and play them on turn three. Like you want to wait a little bit for them to True. dump some of their low cost cards so you can nail one of their more powerful cards that come becomes That's powerful true. when it hits the board, you know? So like, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty I'm excited stoked. for the card. I, it's definitely like the one I'm most excited for to get and play around with. Cause it just feels like a good, nice mid rangey kind of card that I don't have to think too incredibly hard about where it goes into. Like there is some nuance, like what we just described, but it's not like the headache, that X 23 is going to be in like finding the perfect list for just uh, destroy. Right. So I think that's actually going to be a lot more daunting than people think. Yeah. Um, plus, this month, uh, or this week, I should say, for the variants, pretty great. Uh, look at that! That Kitty Pride's finally out. Man, I'm, so, I'm so upset. I, I just thought I thought this was one of those variants that would just never come out. So I spent twelve hundred on the other one, where she's like coming through the yeah. wall with her little dragon. But this is the one I've wanted. This uh, this wedding dress one. So yeah, now that's coming out, I'm like fuck. So yeah. My caches are so I'm kind of hoping X23 and uh, Lady Deathstrike stuck just so I could spend all of my caches on this. The Spider Man 2099, I'm not super hyped for that variant, but uh, yeah, the Kitty Pride faux show. Yeah, I like it a lot. Um, but what are your what are your thoughts? Like, if anybody listening does not have Spider Man 2099, what are your thoughts on that card? Um, it's probably a card that I would say is hated on a bit too much for just being very meh. Um, I think it's a bit better than people give credit for, especially with the change to go spider to, um, to be a one drop. So now you can go on five him followed by her to kind of direct where he goes. Mm -hmm. as like a Shang Chi. Um, 
it's just the randomness, right? Of like hitting, like if you, if they, if the, um, that one location that gives you the two negative two ninjas comes out and they play a big card there, you're yeah. like, okay, let's go over the 50, 50 and you hit the little ninja and you help them. Uh, that, that feels bad, yeah. but I, I don't think he's horrible. Uh, I just think he's not one that you really want to target. Um, Kitty Pride being in this is a very weird thing for me too because yes, for new players that came out after she was given to everybody, yes, that's a thing for them to get and she's a very good card that you should target if you can't, but I feel like maybe they have better numbers than I do. I mean, I mean, not even maybe, they do have better numbers than I do uh, to represent this. Yeah. So like maybe there's more players that don't have her than do at this point um, and that's like their thinking uh, behind it. There's there's something going on. I've been like I, I tweeted about it and talked to a few people about it. The weirdest thing. So like um, you know, I just posted my first video in a couple weeks, and I was going through my comments just to check the comments on that video, and then I started getting a little further, and I had multiple people ask me, "What's a good She-Hulk yeah. replacement for this deck?" on older videos, and I'm like, "What mm -hmm. the fuck is happening?" <laughs> right? And some people think that Marvel Snap just got a lot of new players from, I don't know. Like they've, they've been Post doing Malone. a lot of stuff. There was a Conqueror's event, right? What? He oh, did, Post Malone? He did just talk, yeah, uh, he, he mentioned about that briefly on Joe Marvel Snap is playing a game, that game lot on uh, Joe Rogan's podcast. And like, you know, a podcast that gets millions of views uh, is going to at least get, if you, again, if you get 10% uh, yeah. of the viewers that go to like watch the Joe Rogan podcast and they go, huh, that's interesting. And then half of those people actually go out and download the app to try it. That's still a pretty big number of people that just yeah. flock to your app. Yeah. So, yeah. So it might be, I don't know, maybe they screwed up putting Katie Pride, but maybe it's a good thing. Maybe people will be, you know, stoked about it. But uh, going back to Spider-Man 2099, I don't know if you saw it, but uh, I've, I've mentioned it a few times on Twitter and stuff, but uh, Glenn Jones said that, Spider-Man 2099 is one of the more uh, least, like the card's play rate does not reflect yeah. its win rate, right? Like it has like a decent win rate. I don't know if it's causal or people are just like putting it in decent decks. But anyways, I'm going to read you a deck list real quick. Somebody shared, I can't remember who the deck creator was, but I, I do think Spider-Man 2099 is a great card, but it just has to find the right deck. But he called this deck Arachnophobia. I shared it the other day, but anyways, it's Ghost Spider, Craven, Zabu, Jeff, Silk, Storm, Spider-Man, uh, Shang-Chi, Captain Marvel, Miles Morales, Spider-Man 2099, and Magneto. So... Uh, it's kind of like that that Lambie deck yeah, that's yeah. been getting popular, where it has like you know the bounce of uh, the move aspects, but it doesn't have like Kitty or Angela in it. But anyways, I played a ton with this deck, and I had a pretty good win rate. Um, I was playing on my phone, so I didn't track it, but it was very very good. The only issue is because I, I asked him this too. I was like, "Well, your only enabler for Spider Man 2099 is uh, yeah. Ghost Spider." Right. I'm like, is that an issue? Like, do you need to put Iron Fist in? And he was like, well, it's still a pretty decent static card. Yeah. It is <laughs> just know? a four six, so like, which hmm, those don't really exist sense. much anymore. The the baseline is for a lot of them four yeah. fives, except for Iron Lad, White Queen and him. Right. Those are the only four sixes right now. Yeah. Yeah, because they toned down yeah. uh, Rock Slide and brought uh, Enchantress back down. So I had a lot of success with that list. I am debating on figuring out a way to put Iron Fist in there just as like, you know, a backup. But um, I was winning fine so without it, you know? I So one thing I do, so like I, I play a decent amount of battle mode, but I play literally a single person being my girlfriend. She's the only person I play in battle mode ever. Um, and we have fun doing it. But the thing that we do to mess like mess around with it is like we usually do like a random theme. We'll like be like, well, what do you want to do? And, there, and like like the other night we did like all spider characters, and that's not just the heroes. It's just like also like anyone mm -hmm. that's in that universe. Um, and she and she was like yeah. asking me like who's in like like who's in it, and I was naming people off. And then like when we were playing, like I saw her randomly drop a Mister Negative. I'm like, why the fuck would you play Mister Negative in this list? And she's like, you said he was a villain. I'm like, yes, I said, but I said I I, I followed that <laughs> up immediately, being like, I guess you could technically play him. That tone should tell you maybe yeah. you shouldn't do it. But anyway, 
I did like just yeah. Spider Man, Spider Man Twenty Nine, Ghost Spider, like Miles and stuff like that. I did like that core of move stuff mostly with like Vulture and things too, um, and like Craven, and like it felt kind of good. Like just like I thought it was funny, like how all these yeah. Spider people were working together. I'm like, it kind of feels like a like decent deck that I could go on a ladder with. Yeah, especially with the yeah. Spider Man change. Yeah. Like, I don't know. People are freaking out about the Spider Man change, but I, I oh, really we, like it. We like, haven't talked about that really yet. That's new to us. Look at that. Spider Man Spider Man now is a three five. Oh yeah. That uh, moves the thing with him. I love him. He's great. I love him as a card. Yeah. And and they did great with the animation too. It's like a combination of like a few of the animations they've been working with. Um, so yeah, but he's good disruption, even with the, um, the, the destroy meta going on, like just making yes. a Bucky yes. Barnes I've out of there. That. If you have priority, you know, or whatever, um, pulling, just pulling things around. Like I really, really like it. By the way, before people in the comments scream at us, there's actually a lot of four sixes, Drax, hell cow, Namor thing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We didn't so, mention those. To, <laughs> to, be fair. Queen and Iron to be fair, Drax, he's like, no play. Uh, even White Queen doesn't see much play. Um, N- Namor yeah, doesn't see any play either because, like, he wants to be on his lane alone, so you're not playing for the 4-6. Um, what makes a 4-6 good is if it does something. That's what makes 4-drops good. Yeah. That's why I was so big on Iron Lad being in a Thanos deck for the longest time. For months, I was like, play him in your Thanos list. Um and uh, finally, yeah. people started doing it. I'm like, yeah, see, a fucking iron lad that hits a time stone is pretty goddamn cracked, isn't it? Isn't it? Like, yeah. uh, I just for like it. Yeah. The ones that just kind of, and then the thing. Also, I what else did I say about the thing when in Haivo? I thought it was the best card in the list because it was just so consistently good. Um, yeah. So I yeah, there's there's more four sixes. My bad. I wasn't thinking of the bad ones. I apologize. <laughs> also, <laughs> Hellcow the people play is actually one of the ones that get, gets cut the most in discard list because it's just a little awkward because it's random and you have more controlled uh, discard with Lady Sif, Colleen Wing, and Modok to control what you're discarding. Where Hellcow, his stats lately have not been enough to justify the randomness of what he does. Yeah, yeah, that Dakin list I was telling you about, the discard one, and ran Hellcow, and like I mentioned in my video about infinite decks, I was like, this is the card that I might I might replace yeah. with something, you know? Um, just because it's uh yeah, like the amount of times I discard like a Modoc when I just have like the perfect hand, you know, and it discards like a Modoc, I'm like, oh you know, so um so yeah. I'm you I am using because I it's the only Hellcow variant I have, I am using that cursed uh yeah. pixel variant i, I have the, the that one, but I also have the winged one i really like that one where it's like a close-up on him uh where he's like in mid-flight i like that oh one. yeah i would rock the venomized one but yeah i don't play hellcow that much so like it's popped up in my shop and i'm like eh, nah i'm not gonna do it so but uh yeah so here um we we both this next topic we've both wanted to play some ronin master mold all right. And you pointed something out. And as per usual, I definitely agreed. But somebody somebody shared a list. I can't remember how it went exactly. Someone shared a list and it was in a dark it had a dark hawk package, right? And and you were talking about how like, no, I don't want it to be with the dark hawk package. I can't remember what your argument was specifically. So but yeah. yeah. Uh I feel but- like Ronan Needs yeah, my argument with that something. specifically with the Dark Hawk list, because a very common thing when I see people running Ronin lists, they're like, yeah, just throw in Zabu, throw in Dark Hawk, uh, Rock Slide, and stuff like that, and then like some other things to help Ronin out with like Master Mold and things like that. And my argument is like, you're playing two cards where plan A is, you know, good and plan B could be good, but what makes a good deck is when they can work together at the same time. And I feel like Ronin and Dark Hawk are directly contradictory to one another in terms of what they do um because if you have your opponent draw more cards to have them in their hand then dark hawk smaller right um then vice versa is true yeah. if you keep the, the stuff in their deck so that's my issue with that i want ronan and those kind of decks to be a bit more uh focused on their own game plan and have more supporting cards around that idea uh and then i the the tweet i put out was basically like saying like it, it's a bit disheartening that um those type of decks that have incredible synergistic and uh you know 
requirements for the deck to be good are never mm-hmm. going to be, at least as it stands right now, never going to be as good as something like the recent Lambie list, which is just, at the end of the day, it's... I, I can, Today, before I came on here, I spent t- two and a half hours casting the uh, Snapped Off Fan Open, right? And there was 14 decks registered underneath the moniker, according to Snapped Off Fan's data, move. And I was like, are most of these the Lambie list? And they said, yeah, like most of them were. And I was like, okay, well, in the future, I hope we can discern the two because it's not a move list. It's a tempo list. It's a lot of, it just has a sub move archetype basically that just happens to be in line with these cards like Jeff and Silk and Craven just to benefit from those. So a deck like that, well, yes, has synergies with the move stuff because of Craven being in there, right? Otherwise, is mostly just good stuff, tempo, play them out, like Angela, Kitty Pride, and things like that. Yeah, that deck has a lot less synergy to, to with each other because you just play the cards out. Their stats are good on their own; and they can carry the weight of your matchup. Where in a Ronin Shell, Master Mold of two two, the best card you have in the deck that's a supporter of Ronin is Maximus, who's a three seven, which is great to go. It's it's fantastic if when you have the line for Ronin of five. Maximus, or I'm sorry, Rona 5, Mystique, and then Maximus on 6 is great. Really cool. Fun yeah. and dandy. But you're also, everything else around that is not as good. Like, Korg is nicely statted as a 1-2. Rockslide's a 4-5. Uh, then Zabu opens up the door to having all these other 4-drops just be really good. If we had other 4-drops in the game that did more things like, you know, Master Mold, uh, like let's say it was like a a four or five like rock side that just adds like basically um you know a one a one one into your opponent's hand or two one ones in your opponent's hand mm-hmm. something like that right um that'd be cool me I you know what I want to see though I had this idea master mold should have a rework slight rework where he adds um one sentinel to the opponent's hand on reveal add one sentinel to your opponent's hand and then ongoing so we have finally another on reveal ongoing card to make use of like all these changes to mystique and stuff like that right and uh, absorbing man um plus one plus one for each sentinel on your opponent's board boom i like that something like that um i would love because yeah, when we were talking about it and um, somebody shared their list, what was it? Like, my hips don't lie. They just happen to have a bunch of damn hips that turned into a master mold yep. kind of like bounce list. And uh, it used it used Baron Mordo too. And I played a lot of that, right? It was probably one of the better master mold lists, but it was nowhere near as a uh, nowhere near as good as when you run mm-hmm. the Darkhawk package as well, right? But um, I also think Baron Mordo, like I tweeted about this and people had interesting suggestions, but Baron Mordo... I, I went up against it. Somebody like there's been so many interesting decks just in conquest, just people experimenting. Somebody was playing Baron Mordo. I can't remember what else they were playing with it, but every time that fucking card came out, it screwed me up. I think I was running the the uh, Lambie tempo move type deck where you have all these low cost cards, and I was getting like a six cost silk, and I'm like, you mother, you know, it just screwed up my whole game plan. So I, I really like trying it, but like it just wasn't doing what it should, but. The issue right now, um, kind of like uh, why I like your suggestion is, like everything in the master mold list, even though you're buffing up your master mold, you're helping your opponent, right? In some way, like they're not dead draws. Like Darkhawk, when you're using Korg and Rock Slide, if they're drawing one zero rocks, those rocks are not going to help them in any way, shape or form, right? Nothing at all, unless they're running a Patriot list. When you're running Master Mold and Ronin, you're giving them two threes. And maybe they just couldn't play anything anyways. They're like, oh, cool. I got a free two cost, you know? So I'm like, even though I'm bu- I'm buffing them up a little, I'm still getting three power on each yeah. uh, on the board. Or if Master Mold put like a weaker uh, Sentinel in there, right? Like a 1-1 one, one or, or like a 2-1. Just something that like disrupted them a little bit. But yeah, um, I also realized running that list too, Master Mold without a Mystique is just terrible as well like you need two of those on the board oh, you mean, uh, so Ronin. yeah Ronin, like uh, without a mistake yeah 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 um but yeah like i i want 
I want more of what the Darkhawk package is, right? Uh, like the Stature Black Bolt one. <clears throat> That's why I'm pumped about uh, Silver Samurai, because we can run those together, right? And I could start moving them around. Um, this guy, Owl, um, who's been gaining some popularity on Twitter with some of his lists. Oh, there he is right there. Where is he from? Uh, He's from... I don't remember. I remember I was, I was looking Singapore, at their... Uh, yeah, I think maybe... Yeah, one of those. Looking at their Twitter this morning, because they were showing a list that was uh, 27 and 1 or whatever. And then they said that they had a 92% win rate through 70 games with their list. But then they said they, they I tried finding it yeah. uh, through Untapped. I tried just looking up cards with this, this, and this. And I guess they just removed it um, from the date, uh, from like their profile. So it wasn't showing up anymore. So people couldn't look it up. Because um, I, uh. I couldn't find anything even close to that. But like, if he's saying if what they're saying is true, seventy plus games played with a ninety two percent win win rate is, uh, and that's also was conquest. They said it was conquest. So yeah, I'm interested. And the only cards that you could see based on the banner behind the screenshot that shows like the little like thing was Jeff Silk Stature. Yeah, yeah. I think he ended up sharing oh, it. Share it? Um, Wait, is this it? Yeah. I think he ended up uh, sharing it with a different run he did. I'll send it over to you. But, uh, yeah, I have, like, Silk, Stature, uh, Miles, Polaris, and stuff like that. But he's making some really interesting lists. But it runs the Black Bolt Stature package in it as well. And, yeah, like, he's been <coughs> super innovative. Um, I'm actually – my favorite destroy list is his. It basically just – throws out a w bunch of one drops and then you utilize um, death and null on the final turn <clears throat> um, because it, it almost looks like you're playing a zoo list, but then you just start destroying all your stuff, right? And it's just really fun. So I really like how he's innovating. But anyways, he's tossing black ball and stature into other lists and it's very interesting. Um, and I want Master Mold and Ronin to be able to do that. So one or both of them need a rework. Um, but I would love to see more, more of that, more of these little packages that just work in different decks, you know? Yeah. So that one that you share with me is the Sunspot, Craven, Jeff, Silk, Polaris, Spider-Man, Captain Marvel, Enchantress, Miles, Stature, Black Bolt, Magneto. That one is the one that he put together, at least what he says, five minutes before a, a tournament. It's, uh, he said it's not the same one as this one I just sent you, which it's, uh, because I remember oh. people were, because uh, Kawa said, I think I know what it is. Like, there was a whole thing with, like, Regis in there. And then he was like, and then Regis was like, oh, yeah. Did you see he's that like, weird I'll give you $100. And he's like, I'm a crypto guy, and I, I make that much in a day or whatever. And I was like, uh. He's, made, he's talking about, like, making, like, $1,000 every 10 yeah, minutes or something like, crazy. I, I was like, what the hell? Uh, like, either you're rich or, like. Which, you know, look, <laughs> I, I'm not one to be, like, you know, judging people from fucking tweets right uh, i think that's insane but like initially i was just kind of going like all right i'm just gonna be interested in seeing whatever deck you post later and that's it i'm not really too intrigued by you as a person <laughs> if uh, the the the, uh, the crypto thing kind of turns me off and look for those of you who are listening if you're a crypto guy and you you make money doing that more power to you um it's just you know if you're if you are the kind of person that says uh there's value to like uh what were they called Oh my god, the ones that you can just fucking screenshot and take. The 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 stupid yeah. apes or whatever. It's like I think that's silly. But whatever. It it's a it's a free country. You can do what you want. If you wanna sell digital things. But at the end of the day, the guy made some good some yeah. good Marvel Snap lists though. You know? If you guys want to follow him, it's owl underscore snap. Uh owl and guy. yeah, he hasn't posted it's that exactly. Yeah, he hasn't posted it yet. So I was curious as to what it was. I'm sure it's a rendition of the one that uh, that he did before. Um, and it's, it seems to be, again, mm -hmm. an extension of the Lambie idea of that tempo, a lot of big good stuff at the front end and, like, you know, some synergies in there. I do like the Stature Black Bolt package. It's the one I played in my weird uh, Infomaniac deck that I had some good runs with. I, I, I'm a big fan of that oh, yeah. package, so... Yeah. So yeah, hopefully uh Snap does some stuff where people can be a bit more innovative because yeah, like um it is interesting that and, and I don't know, just from a game design perspective, it's interesting that 
uh, Dark Hawk has just been one of the best cards since it released, uh, regardless of the nerfs around that package. And they haven't been like, oh, we should do more stuff like this. Yeah. You know what I mean? <clears throat> but maybe they're trying. Maybe they're trying with like, you know, the theme of this month and stuff, you know, but uh, but yeah, I, I don't I don't know if anything will be as effective as the Dark Hawk one because that's like this good balance of disruption. You know what I power, would like, you know, as well. In terms of helping out the uh, that deck, I would be okay with taking two power off of Baron Mordo, making him a two one, just like Black Widow, and having them draw two cards and make them six drops. But also changing the way he works a little bit to saying uh, your opponent draws uh, anything like like two cards that are under like five or less and then they become six. yeah so it, uh, yeah. it will draw lower cost cards yeah that would be good too just just something like when that card works it's great but you don't but, know, you know it but works, like um, only, it just it's the same thing with yeah it's like you it's don't like know what the impact man. was or like a lot of these other cards people say are bad because they don't see yeah some people were su- yeah some people were suggesting too to give it the the spider hand treatment right so you could see what yeah. you're hitting too just to have a little bit of information. Like, I don't know if that would be enough, I mean, but it, it might just, be enough just something. for I them to get play in blanket decks that are not even Ronin decks. I think uh, just a two, three, that's the, uh, the base stat line for like a, the slight above curve, right? Um, for those kind of effects, that's disruptive. And you see what the disruption was. Um, like if you see uh, your opponent draw like a dark Hawk, that's a, a, a six, you're probably pretty happy about that, right? Because you now you know what's coming on turn six and how to make your priority work around that. I don't know. Yeah, and you know they can't do like a you know like a dark hawk with a shang chi or something like that. They're gonna have to decide. Yeah, and if, if they did that, they might even like nerf them down to like a uh, like a two two or something like to be on par with like uh, something like spider ham. But um, but yeah, something like that I'd be happy with. I, I want to see that card uh, get some more play. I think it's a really Really good effect. Can we also just make um, Ronin a four yeah. cost, please? <clears throat> Who cares? Yeah. Right? Just do that. Do that. Like I, I know they said. Yeah. So that way you can run like him in the beta or whatever when he was a fourth something, and now Zabu might be. But like the context between now and the beta is not the same. There's a difference between saying that old Nova was way too good in the beta where he gave plus to everything because that's just a blanket. Yes, obviously that's good, and no matter what the meta is, okay. That will always be good. Or the old Okoye being a one-two that pumps your deck. That's always going to be good in any meta because it's a great one drop. And it comes down to, did you draw your Okoye on one? No, 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 I did. I win. That kind of thing. So, yeah. but in terms of Ronin, I don't think that's the same idea because it's contextual within the type of deck that is played in them. Uh, plus, it, it with Zabu, it would actually make for a reason to run Zabu. But then, what other four drops are you running besides like Shang Chi and like Enchantress? Maybe that's enough. Just Shang Chi, Enchantress, and him, and maybe Captain Marvel. Now, does she use a four drop? I, um, oh oh yeah, yeah, Iron Lad too would be great for that. You know, but but the thing is too, like because of what we were just talking about with Ronan. So many of his enablers have an upside to them, right? Maximus is drawing them cards, right? So maybe they have access. Uh, you know, Master Mold is giving them free Sentinels. So like, make them up, make them a freaking uh, uh, a four three. Like, I I can't tell you how many games I had too where just I shoved all their cards into my opponent's hand and they were able to play all of them. So not only did they have access to all their cards, but they had a yeah. small hand size too. So, <laughs> so my Ronin was like small and also, they just had a lot of power. I'd be so cool like, with the com- but I'd be I cool with the complete rework them. too for Ronin. I, I would be okay with that. It would make me a little sad because then there's really no place for Master Mold and Baron Mordo <laughs> and stuff like that. Maximus is just blanket good enough to be played in like Surfer and yeah. stuff, of course. But I don't know. It's that's a weird archetype to like really make value of, and then cards you think would be good, like people will always think like, oh, Black Widow's gonna be good. No, because it's a free card that denies them a draw, so they get one less card into their hand for the game, and then it's a f- zero cost that they just play, get rid of. So it's uh, yeah. I wonder what the average hand size is at the end of the game. Like, what if they they really flip this effect? Right? What if he gave power? Yeah, like what if you had power for like cards they didn't have in their hand or something like that, or cards they had on the board? Something, you know? Yeah, but then he'd be like, what Punisher should be. 
Oh yeah. You get you get yeah, they, weird they, they, they gotta especially yeah, especially <laughs> they just came out with the the old beta season for Daredevil cards, which I picked up by the way because I didn't have a Daredevil. Yeah. Except I had a baby Daredevil. I don't like the baby stuff that much. It's just, but that I season pass Daredevil them. variant very good. But the other two, I'm like, yeah, that one's pretty cool. I mean, I like the Punisher one. I have no reason to play it. <laughs> yeah, never, never gonna play them. So. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully they, they do so. I see that like probably as one of the most Punisher, requested. Yeah. Like I see people talk about it all the time. I would love to see just a list, right? Just a list of what they, they have their eye on and just but it's also a nice surprise, right? Like when OTAs come out, it's like, oh my God. So I don't know. Maybe maybe it's better not knowing. But um yeah, uh one or two more topics. Let's talk about this this comment in the dev questions that I think was dumb and I see it all the time. So anyways, <clears throat> somebody somebody made a post and it's called State of Nimrod, all right? And think about the context of when we're talking about this. Uh, during uh, a weekend mission, okay, <laughs> where you've got to play Nimrod, and it says, <clears throat> what's your point of view on the State of Nimrod in the meta? The card is more popular than ever with Shuri and technically indestructible. Its only counter is armor, which is not only a card adapted for every deck, and Cosmo is easily dodgeable with Destroyer, which is usually paired with Nimrod. Uh, do you consider him problematic, or is it once again a Shuri problem? And changing her to like, <coughs> God, something's in my throat. But anyways, a 2x or 1.5 maybe. And basically Glenn said, no, this card's not problematic. But this is like a common theme. When people like, they just don't like playing against a card, they're like, hey, Hey, can you guys nerf this? Like, it, it well, it's one of the things that you and I used to rant about with uh, Galactus. We're like, Galactus is fine, you know? Like, I get, like, it was almost, Galactus seems like a thing just to, like, calm everybody down, you know? Even though I think it's going to happen again with Elias coming out. But, yeah, like, do you do you think Nimrod is too strong? Do you think it's a, a very powerful card? I, mean, I think it's a really cool card. I think it can be powerful. Again, it's contextual. And it's the same thing with X-23. It's in a deck that is presented with a lot of counterplay to it um and like look on average you're gonna have six power nimrods if you hit him with shuri cool there are 12 what do we talk about with x uh, with uh lady death strike oftentimes you can get more than 12 in a lane uh especially with a singular card um but even even in this context yeah. unlike lady death strike you don't need a singular card to win that lane against nimrod you can have multiple so that makes it even easier in my mind to beat Nimrod. Of course, I've lost to Nimrod decks. Sometimes they get over to like, there's sometimes there's a game where they have Death's Domain and Sanctum Santorum, and then they, they play the Nimrod on Death's Domain, yeah. and then they Venom the Nimrod again, and then fill those other ones up that I can't get to. Of course, I will lose games to Nimrod. That happens. But it doesn't mean it's broken at all. If anything, honestly... To back it up a little bit, I guess in the in terms of this the context of this uh you know issue, or people basically asking for nerfs for cards that they got beat by, right? That they saw more of because of a weekend mission even on top mm. of that. Is there a single card in Marvel Snap right now that you think is even problematic in any way, shape, or form, or maybe a bit too good? Man, no. I, I I just love the OTA changes. Like I have just been playing so much Marvel Snap, just the constant changes everything. I'm trying to think right now, like when a card comes out and just like, no, right? Like there, there's just been so many times where I've just like freaked out about people playing certain cards and I kind of changed my tune after they like killed uh leader and then uh death wave came out like full force. And I was like, no, bring back the old leader. You know what I mean? But um, no, I think they've been uh pretty good about it. I, I can't think of anything. Do you think anything's even like borderline problematic? Not really. I think I think the only thing I can consider to be, and this is again for lack of a better word, leaning towards pro problematic. I think more so um, edging the side of caution is where I should actually say that's where it is. Is Zabu and Surfer in the context of game design? Not because they're too good, not because they're broken, but because it maybe can put some type of constraint on their design philosophy. For example, Glenn did say he wanted to give a shot for, you know, Absorber Man at three 
before they did the OTA for him for, uh, for him as a four or five. And he's like, well, then surfer is a bit of an issue. But then of course people are still trying to do absorb and surfer anyway, as a four cost. Cause the four or five made it worth yeah. it now because it gave you the extra power and you can go into magic. And then on seven, you go surfer and absorb man, but that's a different story, I guess. But, um, even then, I think it's a bit over exaggerated because you're it's a card you need to draw on two. Of course, when you curve out correctly, it's gonna make your deck better. That's how any deck works. Like if I draw if I have the curve yeah. of that, that Deadpool deck, if I have Deadpool um on one and then I have like uh like Wolverine on two somewhere, and then I can go, you know, uh Hulkbuster on three on Deadpool, and then all of a sudden my end game ends up resulting in Deadpool being like uh, 20 something power. And then I have another taskmaster with that. And then death is free. Does that mean that Deadpool is too good? No, it means I curved out efficiently. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. The deck I used to hit infinite, like primarily, um, was a deck. Like I, I have it just named in my, uh, my game is just fours. It runs like a ton of four drops. And basically my strategy with it is if I have Zabu mm-hmm. on turn two, I'm snapping. And like it's pretty much a win, but there are countless games where that just yeah. doesn't happen, you know. And I got to play strategic. I got to wait. Uh, sometimes just it never comes, whether it's in conquest or on the ladder. Like the only the only deck that I still think maybe needs some tuning, and we'll see how it goes, is uh, High Evo. But I haven't played against it as much. People are not playing the deck nearly as much now it catches me off guard and i'm just like oh what the hell just happened you know what i mean um and by the way the deck that was popular a couple weeks ago is still very good and it's the high evo double she hulk deck like that deck's still insanely good and people are i think i think just the 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 new season and stuff people are testing new stuff um but yeah that deck is still very good um but yeah other than that because because you're just not running luke cage luke cage is not valuable enough to run regularly yeah. You know, um, <clears throat> so, so yeah, but end of the day, I just didn't like this because I see this a lot from people. They're like, I don't like playing against a specific deck, like diversify what decks you like to play. Like I have four or five archetypes that I like to play and I'm always testing new stuff. And like when there's certain cards or archetypes that see an uptick, I switch decks. Like you're not always going to be able to play your favorite deck. The meta is constantly yeah. changing. You know what I mean? There is a list today at the snap open. Um, I don't know how it's done. Um, I think last time when I signed off, that person was four and one or five and one, four and two, one of those. Um, and an eight round tournament. And they're running a on reveal Thanos list that was running Wong wave and Psylocke. And then some big stuff at the top end. Basically the play was, you play Wong on five, you go Silic on Wong, wave somewhere, and then you have eight energy on turn six, can play your two four drops while your opponent can only play one. That's like pretty much what the deck is built around. And I'm like, that's cool. That's fun. I yeah. wonder how good it is actually, like in terms of like, the, like that idea. But yeah, it's just, I don't know. There, I don't think there's enough in the game to be worried about because of the OTAs and stuff. Um, and I don't even know if Haivo's at that point anymore because I think Haivo is actually starting to become a different deck in the sense of um, I've even seen Haivo decks just running like Zabu and then like some other four drops like tech cards to be like, at least I can just play this Haivo as a 3-4 with like a Shang-Chi or something like that. And then like having a package. One thing I've seen is Haivo decks even cutting Wasp because they're not Lockjaw decks. They're just regular, like not, not even Lockdown decks, mm. just like a mid rangey. I have good value, Luke Cage, uh, you know, the thing, make a bomb really small kind of stuff, right? And then there's like, yeah, I have a I have a backup, you know, tech stuff. Very very cool. And like that's all they need. Yeah. I I've run into a few of the like the toxic high Evo decks where they're running yeah. uh the hazmat and uh abomination and stuff. And it's very annoying when I run into it, but the play rate no. is not high at all. But it was very effective because I had nothing I could do against it, right? Like you have all these cards that are just taking away your power, but the play rate isn't high enough for me to like yeah. really raise I mean, I you know, a fuss about it. So so maybe they did it they did it right and they like tweaked it just enough. Um but yeah. Um but the last topic, I just want to, I want to touch on, we chat about it for two seconds, and it looks like we have differing opinions possibly, but is infinite too easy now? 
Is it too easy? Like, think about like two seasons ago or something. Like, I remember you had a frustrated tweet about pushing for infinite, right? Like towards the end of the season. And now like, it's been a few days, the last two, maybe three seasons. Cause I used to go nuts trying to hit infinite. I used to like, I got my little clicker to see how many games it took and stuff. And the last two or three seasons, it's been within the first week, mm-hmm. barely even trying. So I don't know. Um, my son just hit infinite for the first time. Uh, and uh, he's not bad by any means. I've watched, I've even played on his account. And um, the last season or two, he didn't play nearly as much, but he hit infinite and in just in a matter of days, right? So like, I don't know, like I, I definitely noticed the last two seasons, way more bots. I never used to face bots. I used to beg, like people would be like, oh man, all I do is face bots. I'm like, yeah. give me some bots. And the last two seasons, my final matches to hit rank 100 were against bots this current season. It was not, it was a human. Um, but, but yeah, I don't know, especially with the way they've changed the cubes and stuff like that. So what are your thoughts? Cause you, you said something on discord. So, but I, I would like to have this discourse. Yeah. So you. what I said originally when you asked me, I, I said, I think people are getting better at the game. Um, I think contextually with conquest, people are getting more efficient with snapping. Um, and then a lot of people that are going to be the vocal ones within our communities, uh, being like in like your YouTube comments on like Discord and stuff like that. Well, the ones that are active on social media and Twitter, those can be the ones that actually probably more likely than not play more things like Conquest, a bit more competitively leaning, looking for that edge on other people. So those people who are the ones saying they claim it feels like it's been easier are the exact people I would say it should be easier for you because you're the kind of person that should be able to gain more knowledge and better snapping mechanics and just um, you know thought processes of like what you're going to do with your decks, things like that as you go into games. When it comes to the bot thing, I can tell you this season, I played almost every game was a human. I think I played maybe like... I, I I can guarantee you I played less than five bots on my run from seventy three to one hundred. Yeah, that's that's interesting because I played primarily mobile this season, and usually when I'm playing on a, a PC early I, on one monitor I have Snap, on the other one I have the bot list pulled up. This time I didn't, and I, so I can't guarantee it. But it felt it felt like I played yeah. a lot more humans. Like it felt like way more than the last couple seasons. So, but I wasn't comparing the list. Um, So you definitely might have something. I will say this. Anybody who's been following me for a while knows that I'm not like a big, like first turn snapper. Uh, I think like snapping, especially on ladder, is just like really like arbitrary. It's not a like huge thing, but playing so much conquest has made my snap game 5,000 times better. Like I can't even explain express because conquest is what i've been waiting for like high stakes things matter multiple rounds more strategy and now when i'm on the ladder like i just get in these grooves i'm like you know boom i'll snap and i care less about losing yep. as well so i'm like oh that just wasn't the game for me boom i bounce i go to the next one so you may you may be onto something you may be onto something that people are getting better and it's justified that they're hitting it yeah, uh, a little I bit do, faster so you know how I, you know how i know I don't go against very many bots. It's because every game I fist bump. Always. I always fist bump my opponent. But didn't they like didn't they like change it? Didn't they like change it so the bots are a little bit smarter now? And they'll like do I, like hey I still like yet to see a stuff? bot emote. Whenever I know like I'm going against a bot. And I'll even like I'll spam hello, I'll Spider Man point and like fist bump and shit. And I'm like, because I'm like, I'm pretty sure you're a bot. And they're just it's just crickets. Um but like I don't know, like against people, I'm like even like the one, even the ones that like emotes spam me and like Chavez emo or not Chavez, I'm sorry, um, uh, da, 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 Kama, uh, yeah, and it's like all this stuff. I always yeah. just like take all of that in, and then I just slap a single fist bump, and then usually nine times out of ten, my opponent just goes, "Okay, fist bump," and I I wonder on the other side they're like, "Fuck, I'm a dick," <laughs> like I I wonder. Uh, but I, I, I don't know. Hilarious. I think there's a lot less bots. Uh, again, my experience is going to be different from someone else's experience because uh, the ladder is weird. Yeah, the way I've been gauging it, too, is because bots, <clears throat> they, like, instantly mm-hmm. play their card, right? Um, like, right after you go. Like, there's not waiting and stuff like that. And I had a lot of people, like, 
just roping and just doing really dumb stuff on the ladder. So uh, just my normal signs of bots, aside from having a list up, um, I just didn't see it as much. So I don't know. And my, my son, by the way, everybody, my son hit infinite with Galactus this season. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, I don't know what it was. He was like playing, like he, he, like he was doing some, he was using some of the top decks and then he like played a few Galactus players and he's like, dad, can you find me like a good Galactus list? I'm like, sure. So like I checked on tap, I tweeted about it mm-hmm. and he started playing it. And within a day, he went from like 75 to a hundred and it was his first time hitting infinite. So, uh, I don't know what that says. Like. This weekend, I've had a problem with Galactus. Like, <laughs> so I don't know if like people are like finally figuring out how to play him or what. I don't. I don't know. It's like worrisome, but uh, not. So, I, I mean, I'm not sure. I, when I was talking about uh, this with you today uh, before we started recording, I was saying I was working on a new video, and one and uh, it's almost done editing. I'll probably have it uploaded tonight or tomorrow morning. Um, but basically, it's like random. Uh, lists on Twitter be like, is it good? Is it bad? And one of them was a Galactus list, and I won that game. Basically, it was funny because I went um, turn one Yondu, turn two uh, Adam Warlock, then turn three Wave, and then Galactus on uh, negative zone, right? Because I'm like, because they play turn one, uh, what's it called? Uh, Bast. And I was like, oh, they got a bunch of three cost stuff. So this is perfect for me because if they play a negative zone, they just have a bunch of zero stuff. Um, so Galactus flipped, oh, yeah. got it. They had they had nothing in that lane, and then when they played something there, um, I immediately followed up with a. Uh, I played Death and um, Professor X on turn five on that lane. It was insta one, and they played a magic to change it, and I was like, let's go. Let's go. Oh. <laughs> so, I mean, Galactus, Galactus lists are, just so need to evolve and change. And I think um, uh, there's always going to be people that hate Galactus because of like what the, the deck was before and stuff. But I think now, and even when Eliath comes out, I think Galactus is uh, still to be respected, but I think not as hated. I don't think it's as toxic as it used to be. Um, and I don't think it will be with Eliath either. I think uh, the... The counterplay is a lot more prevalent. Spider Man is a phenomenal Galactus counter now. Um, if you again, you have to have priority, of course. If Galactus player has priority, then sucks to suck. Is it ain't your game? But Spider Man's awesome yeah. for that. So yeah, the thing that's been screwing me up is just mainly like the wave play when they draw a wave. I'm just like I don't have mm-hmm. seven power yet. <laughs> I, I can't you know, do anything. And, uh, I've just noticed just like me just half paying attention. Uh, I can't tell you how many games I've screwed up in the last just week, not paying yeah. attention to priority. Right. And I'll snap back or something like that. And then because I thought I had priority and I will say this, I've never heard anybody complain about it except for me. The way the glowy thing switches is way yeah. too fucking slow. It is way too slow. Like the new turn will start. And then so it, like has like a three or four second like delay. Time, yeah. Yeah, it needs to be immediate because I'll check it. I'll be like, okay, cool. And then I just, I play and it's what loses me a game. And I don't know how nobody, I don't see people bitching about that 24 seven because it happens to me all the time. Maybe I'm just a moron. I do play too fast too. But anyways, I'm infinite. So suck a butt. By the way, by the way, uh, real quick, before we sign off, Brad, let me tell you, do you know how many medals I have right now? I saw your tweet, was like 2,500? I have 6,635 medals, okay? I just had to put that out there for the people who bitch about, like, oh, my God. I had some asshole on Twitter. Doesn't even follow me, so I, I feel justified calling him an asshole. He's like, um, well, uh, some of us are parents, and we're busy. I'm like, oh, I know what you mean. Uh, I work full time. I'm a father. I also have a YouTube channel, a podcast. You know, I have a girlfriend I spend time with as well. Like, don't fucking – like, it's Marvel yeah. Snap. Like, fucking – it's a game designed to play in the bathroom. Like, whatever. So don't hit me with – like, unless uh, – I was like, I get it. Like, if you have like a toddler, then maybe then I give Regis you a pass. Is still, but you know, making yeah. videos and it, content with his daughter in his hands as he's playing, so you have no excuse, sir. Exactly. <laughs> Just none. But yeah, I have enough medals to get literally everything in the shop, and it hasn't even been a week. You know, um, I, so I do hope that they do something with this shop because the stuff in there is just there's only one mystery garbage. This, this time, like, there's some too. credits. There was three last season. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. I wish they at least had two, you know, um, the booster thing for a thousand credits is, uh, or no, it's only seven fifty this season. Not bad, but it's, um, yeah, it's all right. It's like a gamble. Like I, I got a bunch of them last season and like, you'll hit like three or four of cards you'd ever play. Then you'll just get like one of your favorite cards. And you're like, yeah, I can't wait to split this motherfucker. But, um, anyways, go farm some, uh, metals. My strategy is I play, I play po proving grounds constantly. And then I gain like 20 silver tickets and then just by dumb luck, you'll just yeah. get a bunch of medals. You Dude, know, I have so. like 800 boosters for, uh, no more. Yeah. I, I saw really? that. That's that. Did you see that? Did you see that new, um, that Python script that people are sharing where you can. Yeah. Yeah. I did that. Um, so anybody who's uh, listening, there's a, a Python script going around Twitter where, uh, you just run it on your computer and it'll show you every booster that you've ever gotten in the game. I've gotten like 160,000 almost, but it'll show you like how many infinity splits you have yeah. on each card, which cards you That's have the most boosters for. Like so it's kind of cool if you want to like nerd yeah, out about I, that. I wanted to do it, but then I was like, mm, I don't really want to take the time to install it. Uh, I'll, I'll live vicariously through everyone else and know that my numbers are similar. It's fine. <laughs> I just like it because like now I can like kind of strategize mm -hmm. what I'm going to split, you know, and so like looking through, I could just like kind of look at it at a glance. My son was even just telling me he, uh, he made a little, uh, a little notepad in his phone of what cards he wants to split and which order and stuff. I'm like, Oh, that's cool. Cause I got that pro bundle and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go for some like yeah. crackles. And like, I got a few. I'm waiting so, for that ice so man variant cool. in the season pass. Cause I have ice man. I have a bunch of splits on him. Um, and I have uh, I have one crackle on Iceman. It's the cum Iceman, the one from the uh, the Pride one, where he literally looks like fucking cum. Yeah. Um, I have a gold crackle yeah. for him. I'm like, it's kind of it's kind of kind of sweet. But that one, I'm like, oh, we got to go for the blue crackle. I also have the two I have the most splits of are Iceman uh, at eight, I believe, and then I have Storm at eleven splits and i don't have a single Jeez. fucking crackle for storm yet <clears throat> that's crazy like i i don't know like uh i'm i'm doing like my strategy is like wrong like i don't know what it is um but yeah i think it's because like when i get inks or golds i just yeah. kind of stop you know and i'm just like no chris yeah. like just start going for it like like do your thing you know um because the most the one I have um, a ton of splits on and just nothing yet is Maximus. I love the base. My favorite Maximus is the base art. I love that one. And I've split it how many times? Uh, six. Six, and I got nothing on it. The most I have, though, is Beast. I have two inked Beasts because I inked one variant, and then I got one I like more, and then I uh, split that again. But, yeah, um, I'm going for, for some crackles now. The only crackle I got was on... I got one on uh, Crossbones when I used to play a ton of Magantris, but I just got one on my Professor X baby variant. It's a gold. It's gold with a red See, crackle. Here's the and thing. I'm like, the, eh. I, I have the baby one. Do you know why I like the baby Professor X a lot? It's because. No, it's because my of the, the coloring of the background in the base art. Like no splits is such this perfect, like, contrast and it's just it's nice to look at and it makes me happy especially with the infinite border around it and that's it i know i don't want any other ones i want the noir professor x more than anything though i need that one oh my god the noir yeah. one. dude you need what? to find it so he's it's 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 the noir style and he's going like this and there's like the the circles coming off of his head like the the telekinesis and it's like in a dark shadow. It looks amazing. Oh, I need it. I need it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Cause I love you. I love me some Professor X. <laughs> so it says, uh, it says September twelfth. Wow. it releases. More noirs, finally. So <clears throat> yeah, they had a Bucky. Yeah. They have a Bucky Barnes one that got uh, data mine too. That looks kind of cool. Day. Yeah, I, it was in my shop. Oh, I don't give a shit enough about Bucky variants because the token doesn't do anything. I don't care about the Bucky variant. Yeah, hopefully we get some changes uh, since we saw that uh, that squirrel girl yeah. with the token change. 
So we'll see. All right. All right. Let's wrap All this right. thing up. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Brad. I was known as Brad Sifer. This is Chris, Chris Boutte, Bootman. Hey, what you doing? What you working on? Where can they find you? All that good stuff. Uh, yeah. Follow me on Twitter and uh, threads. I wish more people would follow me on threads. I'm, I'm, I hate how it like spiked up. Died. And then it yeah. just like died off. But anyways, Bootman MSTZ on both. Um, I took a couple weeks off, but I'm back to making content. And I'm like, I've been playing with so many decks and there's a lot of decks that I think are legitimately good that I'm just like, I'm back in the content mode. I want to do daily videos. Maybe if I have time, do two videos a day. So just stay tuned because I need to get all these decks out of my system because I've been playing an insane amount of Marvel Snap. Um, so, yeah, that's it. But, uh, Brad, I heard you're working I on a new am, video that you mentioned. Uh, I uh, would like everyone to review. This is a name in progress. It'll let me know because uh, I, I, I was really doing a two-second thing. The video is basically the concept is like finding deck lists on Twitter, just typing a Marvel Snap, seeing what people are like, this deck's the best deck ever. I am undefeated with it. And then I play a single game with it. And if it wins, it's cracked. If it loses, it lacks. So it's basically cracked or lacks is the idea of what I had. If the name sucks, tell me. I don't give a shit. I have thick skin. I am okay with that. Um, but basically, that's what I'm working on. It's my first video. Chris's deck is in there of some variety. And I'm not going to spoil if it's cracked or lax. So there's that. Uh, yeah, but yeah, as as you all know, who are interested in statistics, playing one game with a deck is the best way. Yeah. To I, le- I figured that'd be, to that'd be a great joke of it. Of like, good. look, you said this is good. I lost one game. Sorry, it's not good. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> it'd be even better. I if didn't just even misplay did terrible plays, I never but, um, misplay. It never happens. It does. It's true. Uh, you know, and you know something I've been thinking about? I- I'll tell you what the, the worst part about the creator program is. Before the creator program, I used to have no problem. I was also a smaller channel, even though I had like a few thousand. I had no problem calling out decks other creators were sharing and talking about how god-awful they are. And now I don't feel like I could do it. Because just we're, we're more of a tight-knit community. But like... I'm telling you, Brad, and my dear, dear listeners or viewers, so many content creators you know and love are sharing the most dog shit decks I have ever seen, and I hate it so much. So just know that. I don't know if I'm going to make videos calling them out, but just know it. Just know that's happening. Take those decks, test them in improving grounds before you do anything that matters with them because, man, I've been testing so many decks lately, and I just want to, like, publicly shame yeah. some of these creators just like this is fucking awful but anyways uh, maybe hey, brad maybe. will do that uh, uh yeah so, so. <laughs> and of course you can also find me on twitter and youtube at brad's i'm actually starting to stream a bit more uh, a couple of times a week right now until i and eventually i'll come up with an actual schedule so stay tuned for that side note quick shout out the opposite variety of uh, what Chris was saying, instead of shouting out people that are making bad decks, I'm going to shout out the people that make the good decks or acknowledge when their decks could be bad. Regis Kilbin will always be one that I first and foremost represent and say he is amazing. He's a great content creator, always shows the stats behind the deck and says, this is a small sample size. I did some cool things. There might be some changes here or he'll flat out be honest, be like, this deck was really bad. Don't play it. It does fun things sometimes. So I appreciate him. And of course, Lambie is he's a re- there's a reason he's a former like world champion for Hearthstone when he played that uh, that game and he's now considered the best player in Marvel Snap it's for good reason he's very good if he says a deck is good he takes time to before he shows it uh, like this most recent list i would acknowledge it and uh, accept it as being like this is probably a good list or a good start to something to get more fine tuned I will, I will say this. So my favorite, uh, I think KM Best, he does like weekly, like here's the top like meta decks. Lambie, I will say, I do think he shares yes, some more advanced decks. I think he always shares good decks, but I think it's like for some of them, it's like giving like a toddler a knife, right? Like they're just going to fuck themselves up with it. So, so like, so I just want people to like recognize that. Like if you see like this, if you look at the deck, you're like, I'm not sure how this works. Like, Take it in the proving grounds, get a feel for it. Or even um, what I always recommend to people, like reply to him on Twitter and say, yeah, hey, yeah. what do you do in this situation or whatever? Because like Brad said, Lambie is one of the top players like in the world. Like he just won like the creator class tournament that had a lot of high talent players. 
So like he's going to do a lot of things with that deck. He has snapping strategies that maybe you're not going to be great with. But yes, what Brad said, Lambie is one of the best. I love his decks. So yeah, but no, that that new one that the one yeah. with the spiders and moving and stuff, it's like idiot proof. Yeah, like just that just use true. it. Like you have Kitty and Angela, you have Craven, and then you have Silk just bouncing around randomly. Like you got Captain Marvel, she does her own thing. So any moron can play it. That's why it's so popular. You know, <laughs> it's just that's gonna do proof. it for us. We appreciate you. We so, love yeah. you. And as my old pastor used to say, may our faces shine on be uh, shine on you and be gracious to you. May we look on you in favor and give you our peace. Amen. Bye bye. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.